Hi students, this is Mr. Yao. In the last lesson, we have learned how to identify slopes from two points or from graphs. So in this lesson, we're kind of going to go backwards. We are going to review how to graph linear equations, or in other words, how to graph straight lines in a coordinate system. And that is going to need a slope-intercept form. So let's quickly go over that. Slope-intercept form of a linear equation is y equals mx plus b. That is uh, the one topic that you spent a, quite a bit of time on last year, which was the main focus last year. So in this equation, y equals mx plus b, m represents the slope, and b represents the y-intercept. So y-intercept is a point on the y-axis, and the slope typically, again, is a rise over run. Or in other words, change in y over change in x. Okay, so let's get to uh, some uh, examples. Here's the first example, y equals 2 thirds x minus 5. The first thing we are going to need to do is to identify the y-intercept. Since the equation is y equals mx plus b, this b number is going to give us the y-intercept. Right now, b is negative 5, so the y-intercept is 0, negative 5. The reason it's 0, negative 5 is because it's called a y-intercept, is going to be on the y-axis, and anything on the y-axis has the x-coordinate as a 0, because we're not going left or right, it just got on the y-axis. So 0, negative 5 is right here. Next, we're going to need to identify the slope to get the next point, because slope is going to provide us with the rise and the run. So in this case, the number in front of the x, which is our m, that's going to be our slope. So our slope is 2 thirds. In other words, it's a positive 2 over a positive 3. So we are going to need to use our rise over run. So from the y-intercept, we're going to rise and run to find at least three points on the line. Typically, I mean, 2 is going to give you a straight line already, but you can always get a few more points. Just make sure you have a, a more straight line, since some of you might be drawing by hand. So 2 over 3 means it's a positive 2. That means it's going up by 2. A 3 is because it's rise over run. Let me write it down again. Rise. Over run. So this is going to be a vertical and this is going to be horizontal. So it's a vertical change over a horizontal stretch. Okay, so two is going to be going up, three is going to be going right. So from that point we already have, which is the y intercept, we're going to go up two, that's our up two, then over by three, that's going to get me my second point. I can do it again, up two, over by three, that's going to give me another point. Since I'm going up and right, I can always choose to go backwards so I can get some points on the left as well. So the opposite of going up is going down by 2, and the opposite of going right by 3 is going left by 3, so that can get me another point. Now I can just connect all of these into a straight line. So step 4 is connect the dots. That's how we graph linear equations. I'm going to go over another one. So example 2. This time we have negative 2x plus 3. Let's let me write it down again. mx plus b. So of course we're going to identify the b first, which is the 3. So the y-intercept is going to be at 0, 3. There you go, 0, 3. And now we can actually go over and uh, try to find the slope. The slope is the number in front of the x, so it's a negative 2. But some of you might be like, well, it's rise over run, so we need a fraction. Well, negative 2 is a fraction. You just need to put it over 1. So this is a negative 2 over 1. So that means the vertical change is actually negative, so instead of going up, it's actually going down. Since going down is where the negative numbers are for the y-coordinates. And then 1 is the run, so it's a horizontal change, it's a positive 1, so that is still going to the right. So negative 2, that means we're going down by 2, and then going right by 1, we got a point. Down by 2, over by 1, we've got another point, we can keep going, going down by 2, right by 1, got another point. If you actually want to go completely backwards, then you need to change both directions. Instead of going down by 2, you're going to need to go up by 2, and then instead of going to right by 1, you're going to need to go to left by 1. That's going to give a, get us another point. So, now we can just connect everything into a straight line. That is y equals negative 2x plus 3. Let's do another one. y equals negative 2. So, typically it's y equals mx plus b. Well, in this case, you can actually see there's no x part. 
So this is the same as a 0x minus 2. So let's identify our y-intercept first. It's still a negative 2, so our y-intercept is at 0, negative 2. As for the slope, well, the slope is a 0. 0 means you're actually not. Again, it's rise over run. 0 means the rise is going to be a 0, so you're not actually going up or down. So in that case, it's a horizontal line. And if you go think back about what we reviewed in the previous lesson, y equals negative 2, since you only see one letter, that means this is going to cross the y axis, which means it's going to be a horizontal line, since it's not going to cross the x-axis. There you go. That's example 3. Now there are a few more examples. There's example 4, example 5, and example 6. I'm going to ask you to try them and see what kind of problem you're going to come up right into. Hopefully you have paused and tried. Let's have a look at example 4. So y-intercept is easy to identify. It's a negative 4. So it's 0, negative 4 right there. The slope in this case is a negative 1, because, uh, negative 1 half, because the slope is the number in front of the x. Negative 1 half. This is where things get a bit tricky. Some of you might be like, well, if I have a negative sign, does that mean I need a negative 1 and a negative 2? The answer is no. So when you have a negative sign in the front, you have two options. You can either treat it as a negative 1 over 2, or you can treat it as a 1 over negative 2. No matter what, the whole thing can only have one negative sign. So let's say you want to treat it as negative 1 over 2. Negative 1 means it's going down by 1, and 2 is mean, it means going right by 2. So down by 1, right by 2. I got a point. Down by 1, right by 2, another point. By 1, over by 2, another point. And the other way, we can treat it as a 1 over negative 2. The 1 is a positive 1, that means it's going up by 1. The negative 2 is going left. By two. So I can also choose to start from the y-intercept, up by 1, left by 2, up by 1, left by 2, up by 1, left by 2. So I got more points. But you can see they are for sure on the same line, just one is more to the left, the other is more to the right. Let's connect. And that is y equals negative 1 half x minus 4. There you go, that's example 4. Moving on, example 5. Well, this time you can't jump right to it because we actually have parentheses. So again, our slope-intercept form that we typically graph in looks like that. There's no extra parentheses. There are also no numbers on the y side. So this has a specific name that we will learn more later in the year. This is called a point slope form. In order to graph it, we actually need to do some conversion. But I mean, typically when you see parentheses, of course you're going to distribute. So I'm just going to distribute y minus 6 equals negative 3x minus 6. And the next thing is, in order to have slope-intercept form, I need to get y by itself. I cannot have any number on that side. So in order to move the negative 6, I need to add 6 on both sides. That's going to be gone. I'm left with y equals negative 3x. Well, the negative 6 and the positive 6 cancels out, so I actually have a plus 0, which we typically don't have to write. But you can actually keep it there. It's a plus 0. That at least tells you that the y-intercept is a 0. zero. So I can put a point down. As for the slope. Slope is a negative 3 in front of x, which in other words, it's a negative 3 over 1, which means it's going to go down by 3 to the right by 1. So down 3 over 1. Down 3 over 1. I got some points. Or I can treat it backwards, complete opposite, up three, left one. Got a point here, up three, left one, another point here. Let's connect everything. This is our example five. Now, last one, example six. So the slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b, which typically you put the x in the front. In this question, it's a little bit different. The x is on the back, but it's the same. I just need to switch them around. It's the same question as y equals negative 7 halves x minus 4. So now I can easily identify that my y-intercept is going to be the number on the back, which is negative 4. So 0, negative 4. As for my slope, that is the number in front of x, which is negative 7 halves. 
And again, that is your own preference. Even though the negative sign is in the front, you can treat it either as negative 7 over 2, or you can treat it as 7 over negative 2, whichever one you prefer. Let's say I have the, uh, I mean, since my graph is limited, I can't exactly go down by 7, so I'm actually going to choose this, uh, this one. That means I'm going up by 7, left by 2. So let's do that. 1, 2, one, two 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up by 7 over left by 2. Or I can do another one up 7, which is going to be around here, left by 2. So I got a few points. I'm just going to connect them. And that is going to be my sub intercept form, for example, 6. That is everything for this graphing review lesson. Thank you.